Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to teach you all about light and shadow and the importance of using white space in your loose florals. So let's do it! Okay, to start I'm just going to go over my materials. I'm using Arches watercolor paper, my Winsor Newton Cotman watercolors, and I have a Princeton snap brush here, a size 16. Uh, I may swap it out for a smaller one um, during the tutorial, but that's the, sh the one I have right now. Okay, so the two things I'm going to be teaching you today are how to incorporate light and shadow into your paintings, as well as the importance of white space in your loose florals. So to start, we're just going to go through a quick theory about shadows and light. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a ball. So if you want to sketch it out first, you can, but I'm just going to create a nice light wash of a circle. But to make it 3D, you're going to want to add some shadows in there. So when you're adding a shadow to your artwork, you need to pick out where your light source is coming from. So the light source can be a lamp in your picture, or maybe it's the sun. So in this case, our light source is gonna come from this way. So I'm just gonna quickly draw kind of lines of where that light is coming from. So if the light is coming from here, the lightest part of the ball is gonna be directly where the light would hit it. And the darkest part would be right underneath. So. What you do is you create a light wash to begin with and then once you're ready to add your shadows in you're just going to take more paint on your paper and you're going to tap the underside of that ball okay now you're not going to just leave it like that you kind of want it to be a gradual um, dark to light so i'm just going to wash off this paint I'm going to dry it and i'm just going to drag it out just a bit now if it's too dark again just wipe it off and drag it out a bit. I'm just gonna and just keep wiping it off so you can blend it nicely from one color to the next, leaving that little space so that's the lightest part. I'm gonna wash it off again just so I can take some of that color off and start from the lightest part and drag it out. Okay. Now this will work better with higher quality paper. So I'm using Arches paper. Um, it may not work well if you're using lower quality paper, just be prepared for that. It's not necessarily you, it's the paper. Arches blends really well and it also stays wet longer, which allows the blending process to not have to be as quick so it doesn't dry as fast. So I'm just going to go back in and tap some more dark there and you just kind of continue to do this. I believe I showed this kind of technique going from a light to dark on my wet on wet tutorial as well so if you'd like to have another go at that you can check out that video just moving the color around leaving it lighter at the top okay and again you can go back in with that really dark color and then if you want it to be like on a surface you can create a bit of a shadow underneath. Again, if the light's coming from here, the shadow is gonna be directly behind it. So my blue's bleeding into it a little bit because it's still wet, but you can wait for it to dry. Even when it's dry, you can go back and make it a little bit sharper if you like. Okay. 
So basically in any photo or painting that you're doing, you just wanna pick where your light source is coming from. So if it's coming from here, the shadow's gonna be underneath and going that way. If it was going this way, the shadow would be underneath this side and over there. Same with if you're doing, say, an animal, like the last tutorial I did on the whale. Um, if the light source is coming from the top of the ocean, the lightest bit of that whale is gonna be right at the top where it's hitting the whale. And then underneath the whale, there's gonna be some shadows so you can darken those areas. So that's just a quick little bit on light and shadow. Um, I'm just gonna do a quick floral showing you that. Now, if you're not as familiar with how to do this, you can always look up a reference photo. So I found this photo on Pinterest of this beautiful hydrangea. Now, if you're looking at the hydrangea, the light source is coming from this angle right here because you can tell because the lightest bit of the flower is at the top and then the darker bits are down underneath. Okay, so if you're not familiar with it, look up a reference photo and use that as a guide of where to put your lights and darks. So I'm just gonna show you how to do like a loose hydrangea, kind of using that light and dark technique. I'm just gonna mix my color here. I'm just gonna turn down my monitor because I have a feeling my son's gonna wake up screaming soon and I don't want it to be too loud. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna mix some cobalt blue with some mauve for this nice color. And I'm gonna start by creating a light wash. So this is gonna be a, a very loose hydrangea. Okay, so don't, it's not gonna be too realistic. Okay, so very, very light wash, mostly water. Just kind of creating like little petals using the shape of your brush. And I just keep dipping it in the water because my brush isn't soaking up too much water and you want all these to be wet, to stay wet for a little while, but you don't want them so wet that they're gonna pool everywhere. Okay. It's just creating these petal shapes. Okay. Come on. Okay. Now, when going back in, you're gonna add more paint and the darker bits to the underneath here. The light is hitting, sorry, from the top. So you're gonna leave these bits light and then you're gonna go back in with your color and just tap the ones that are underneath, okay? And maybe some that are like really in there. And you can lighten up as you go further up towards the light source just by adding more water and using less paint. But you want it the darkest underneath. And then looking back at the photo, sorry, one sec, you can see even the stem is really dark. It doesn't even look green because there's so much shadow under there. And then the leaves here, the more part that's hidden, it's darker and then the tips are a bit lighter. So let's create, I'm just gonna use a smaller brush. That's not one of my brushes. Come on, <laughs> here we go. Okay, I have a size four. So I'm just gonna create a really dark green using Hooker's Green Dark and Dioxazine Purple. Okay, and I'm just going to 
create that dark stem underneath. And then I'm going to take my bigger brush and I'm going to create a light wash of the leaf. Sorry, that is my iPad. <laughs> I might actually add more dark bits to bring it down a bit. Like that. Okay, so the tip of this of this um, leaf is going to be lighter and as it gets closer to the underneath of the hydrangea it's going to be darker so what i usually do in that case is i'll take my color so i'm just going to uh, make more green over here hold on and i'll tap where those shadows are Now you're gonna get nice blends like this when it dries. If Again, if you're using better paper, it's just the way it is, unfortunately. If you are using cheaper, cheaper paper, it might not end up looking like this. Just keep that in mind. I don't want you to be disappointed or down on yourself thinking that you're not doing it correctly. Unfortunately, that's just kind of how it is. This paper just blends a lot better. And what I might do is wash off my brush completely and take up some of that color so it's extra light at the tip, okay? And there you go. I'm actually even going to take some of this green, and just go throughout, just touching little bits. It's best to do that when it's wet, okay. And there you go. There is your hydrangea. It's a very loose hydrangea, but just using the lights and the shadows of the flower. Okay, so that is my first lesson about using what I just said. I'm sorry, my brain is gone. <laughs> um, and then the second lesson I'm going to be teaching you right now is the importance of using white space in your loose floor. Okay, so what I mean by that is leaving little, what is exactly what it sounds like, white spaces between your petals. Now, it can be very easy to end up kind of creating blobs. Um, and that happens, like let's, I'm gonna show you for an example with a peony. Something you don't wanna do. So, I tell you to do a C curve and like a little petal here and then another petal here. And then I usually tell you to do lines, but if they're too thick, you know, they're closer together and you add that darkness down there. Okay. And then you add the bits around. It's going to kind of end up just looking like a ball blob. Okay, what you want to make sure you do, and that's even pretty decent. <laughs> um, what you want to make sure you do is you leave white spaces in between the petals. That creates the illusion of using highlights and separation between the petals. So here's one petal. You could just touch that petal gently. Here's another one and another one, okay? Now we can create that ball shape by just adding more little curves, but leaving that white space in the middle and between some of the petals. Not completely, but you wanna leave enough that you can see the separated petals, okay? I'm gonna go back in. And then using kind of like the shadow idea, you're gonna be dropping that darker color in kind of at the base where all the petals meet, where the light wouldn't get to it. The light's gonna to touch 
the tips of the petals more. So that's why you also leave the white space. So it looks like those white spaces are the lightest part of the petals. They're the highlights. I really hope all this makes sense. It makes sense in my head, but sometimes my brain and my mouth don't work together. Okay. So you can add little darker bits on those. Okay, and it just add, adds a bit more depth when you add the darker paint. And go back in again, add a bit more shadow to it. Add some yellow up here. That's not yellow, it's all good. <laughs> but that's what I mean about leaving white space in between your florals, okay? Um, another flower that's kind of tricky in that sense, um, like a daisy or a sunflower. So where you have that middle and then you create the petals. Because there are usually so many petals with those flowers, it's so easy to kind of clump them all together like this and you don't see that separation between the petals. Okay, using a bit more white space will help it look better. And also, usually when you're touching the middle, that brown's just gonna run right out. So a tip for that of how to kind of separate it, I'm gonna make sure I'm in frame. Okay, so you have your middle here. Make sure it's not too wet. You can always darken it up after. But what you wanna do is create that white space. So just the tip touches it, drag it, sorry, it did bleed into there a little bit. Drag it out and then kind of do the petal. Leave some white space. I'm gonna go back in the middle and add more brown after. But leaving that white space shows the separation of the petals. Now you may think that when you actually look at a flower, you don't see all this white space, which is true. But then also when this is dry, you can go over it again with another layer of petals, or you can kind of drop some color to the sides to get that separation, but also having that bit of white space. And then kind of even creating petals behind, but not going over and touching the petals, just a little V behind to make the flower look fuller. Using that shape of the brush. <clears throat> Just to make it look fuller, but you can see using the white space, it doesn't look like a blob of paint, okay? And then also using shadows by using darker colors. So I have like a yellow ochre color here. I'm just gonna add at the bottom just to give it a little bit of depth. So it's not just one kind of monotone flower. Just drop some of that color in there. Some of this dried a little faster than I wanted it to. And then you can go back in there with your brown in the middle. And it may bleed into the yellow a bit, but that's perfectly fine. But there you go. It already has much more dimension because you're using that white space and you're using uh, the darker colors to create the shadows. So I hope that lesson of light and shadows and creating white space helped. Um, if you have any more questions, please comment below. Um, but yeah, just keep practicing, give it a try. And that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for more. Have a great day, guys. Bye.